Hey, what is up you guys? It is Ivor and welcome back to another episode of Boom Each. and today what we're going to be doing is the Task Force Operation episode. You guys voted yesterday for your favorite type of episode for today and Task Force Operation was decision number one from you guys out there. So once again, in the video description there's going to be a little trap pool for the next episode. Again, the same choices, Task Force Operation, Clearing the Map and Boom Beach Base Reviews. I actually really intend to rearrange my base because I always lose so that's going to be something that's going to be happening like later this week I'm not entirely sure but I'll probably include it within the next episode voting like round and stuff like that but today we're going to be focusing on a task force operation and I have a really cool like operation attack to show you guys because I actually managed to take down a, an entire power base which is really cool so let's just go ahead go to the map over here so uh, what we initiated today is operation sour grapes we already have five of them uh, I mean, three of them taken down, as you guys can see, and we still got like 20 attacks remaining, and I'm pretty sure we will not be able to take this one down, for example. Waterloo is a pretty, pretty tough base, and uh, look at all those boom cannons over here, they're really, really powerful. They have like 200% health or something like that, yeah, 214, and then... 82% damage, so what are we talking about? We did try pretty hard, I'm actually gonna show you guys, we actually did a couple of attacks here. Uh, Duck Nugget did one, uh, Tyne did one, uh, Commander Mamo, so we really did try to take this one down, but unfortunately we were not in the ability to do so up to now. So I have no idea, let's actually check Crunch here. Let's see which one is easier. You'd, you'd almost think that this one would be easier, but look at all of these rocket launchers. That just really makes it practically impossible. And at 178 building health, and of course the 72 building damage over here. Uh, look at all those power cells being gone and, and done and everything. So hopefully we're going to be able to take down Waterloo, but I'm not really having my hopes up all that high. So um, right now we actually take down Fluke. Level 78, we took down Residue level 84, and we took down Atlas level 90. So let's just start off, you know, from the beginning. Um, Fluke was attacked by Agazi 88, and he actually went with the tanks and the medic strategy, which is uh, a very nice combination here. Goes for the flare all the way in the back, decides to actually damage the sniper towers over at the right side and the left side, um, actually trying to take that one out. Because that just makes life a little bit easier. So as you guys can see right now, he's already at the power cells and just takes them down. Because uh, essentially it will just do more damage on the power core as you guys can see. Uh, it's already having like 5% health done. You know, that isn't really all that much. But you gotta, you know, you gotta take into consideration that these uh, have a whole lot of life in them. So as you guys can see, he actually made it to the sniper towers. And the interesting thing here is the shock launcher. The shock launcher is going to be... Uh, Providing a pest here, so I was like, whenever he was shooting the the uh, the sniper towers, I was like, why don't you just focus on that, um, on that shock launcher over there? Because that would be most logical for me at least. So as you guys can see, he's actually getting into the base. He's just going straight for the base, which is really cool. And as you guys can see, the shock launcher is locked on to the tanks, and right now actually trying to take them down. Uh, so that way, you know, he cannot really attack. He actually. Did drop a, a smoke there, I think to protect his uh, med medics or something like that. But yeah, as you guys can see, we're just going to speed this one up here. And um, still got like 50 seconds before this one's going to be ending. But he doesn't really get a chance to attack because the shock launch is just such a pain to, uh, to deal with at this moment. So after this, I'm actually going to be dropping my own attack. I'm going to show you guys what my thought process was about the attack. Because I actually did manage to take it down. And I'm going to show you guys how I did this. So I was using my Hathis and my Zookas in order to take it down. So here's how it went. First I was like, you know, I got to do the exact same thing, go to the back. But my, you know, thought process was like, this shock launcher is such a pain to deal with. Let's just try to take that one out. So I'm doing the exact same thing, um, going all the way to the back, making my way up there. Going to the flare, all the way to the back. The Zookas and the Heavies kind of spread out. I actually managed to take out that sniper tower over here with a single artillery shell. And then I decided to drop a couple of barrages on that, you know, shock launcher. But I forgot the fact 
that it has a lot of health to deal with. So that was kind of a mistake from my side, kind of an energy loss there. But as you guys can see, we're actually making it up there. So I'm dropping another another flare to gather the troops around so that way they can actually focus there. And the nice thing here is I'm keeping the shock launcher shocked. Like I'm spending so much energy on that shock launcher even though I did not have to do that because the heavies essentially are just a wall, like a meat wall for the Zookas to just go ahead and attack the rest here. So um, very, very close call here. I'm going to show you guys what it is. So we got 15 seconds left right now. We only have one heavy alive. We're almost made it up there. And there you go. This heavy over here literally has a, a hair. A hair of life left. So um, we actually managed to take down the entire base, which I'm really proud of because I've never done a attack in which I was actually able to take down a base just like that. Okay, so that is Fluke. Now let's focus on Residue and Atlas. So the first attack on um, Atlas is this one from Kineo. And basically what he focused on here real quickly is just, you know, taking out what's most important. And that are these rocket launchers. You've still got these shock launchers to deal with at both sides. You've got some boom cannons. You've got some machine guns, of course. More rocket launchers at the back here. And he actually does a, you know, does a good job of taking out the rocket launchers. So that is a, a very nice thing. The next attack actually comes from Mamako, and um, 36 warriors, all level 10, but did not manage to do anything, as in not taking down anything. Goes for the shock launchers, and as you guys can see, just gets wiped out like, like as, as if it's nothing. Um, kind of sucks, you know, kind of sucks, but still almost took down one shock launcher, which helps out a lot. So let's move on to the next one. We were focusing on, um, on Atlas over here. So we're going to go to Daniel's son and he's going with the same type of unit. He's going with the warriors as well. And I think he's just going to be taking out that shock launcher over there. Let's actually see. Yeah, actually manages to take it out just like that and doesn't do a lot of damage at all on these buildings over here. Which is kind of unfortunate, like, I always know, or I, I always notice that whenever I do an attack and I'm not really successful at it, then I kind of feel a little bit sour from that. So anyway, let's move on to Sam level 8 warriors. They are two levels lower than, than the warriors already been used. Actually did manage to get a force point. And I think he also went with the same strategy, or not. This is really... Okay, so he's going for the rocket launcher. That is a good thing, actually. And actually manages to take out one of them, which is a good thing. And it, essentially, I thought he was going to go for the uh, sniper tower. So then, we have our good friend Gator Claus, as always. Like, Gator Claus just coming to save the day, taking down the entire base. Well, let's see how he's doing it. So, I actually want to experiment with this troop, you know, a combination here, the, the tanks and the heavies, like, it seems that you're just dropping one uh, boat of heavies first, then dropping your tanks, and then your uh, heavies once again, so that way, um, they will just go in the front, but they are also a meat shield, essentially, and look at him go, look at him go, just taking everything out like a boss, tanks are right now focused on the right side corner and the left side as well, and he's really directing a flare down there so that way they can actually go to the machine gun. And look at how much space he actually has right now. There's just a single rocket launcher firing. But that one is not in the ability to do anything right now. And now it's just a matter of going for the base. I mean, that's how simple it can be. But he's really overpowered. Like Gator Claus has been overpowered since day one for us. Uh, and it's really awesome to have him on the team. Like, look how much health these tanks have left. That is just absolutely insane. Okay, so Atlas right now is actually taken down. Let's move on to the last base, which is Residue. And it took us a good a few attacks in order to take it down. So let's scroll to the bottom to see where the first attack is. That is from Pooh. And Pooh went with uh, tanks, uh, with heavies and Zookas. And let's see what he's going to be doing here. So this base is a little bit interesting. I personally would do the same thing, try to take out the rocket launchers, but I would probably do it with, with warriors. He's doing it smart though, because he's dropping the, the heavies first and then he's dropping the zookas, but the problem is the distance. You see, um, everything in the front, like, uh, how should I put it, like, the, the rocket launcher has like a certain range that it cannot fire at. So if it's really close, like, the rocket launcher really cannot do anything and that's where the zookas are kind of in danger. And that is the, the downside of having two rocket launchers relatively close together, because if you get close to one rocket launcher, the other rocket launcher will be firing on what you don't want it to be firing on so yeah okay so that was an attack of Pooh. 
Let's move on to the next attack, Residue of Mr. Bakri. And he's going with tanks and medic, but, you know, he does have a lot of boats, so let's see how well he did. I think he has five. I'm not sure. Four boats. Yeah, they're, his landing crafts need to level up a little bit more. And he dropped the tank and medics really, really late. The, ta the medics basically need a lot of support. Um, wow. Those medics just got taken out just like that. And I have no idea what he's doing. I really have no idea. Is he going for this power cell? Did he seriously just go here to take out that power cell and then retreat? What? That, you know, that tank driver over there is just drunk. Let's just keep it to the fact that he's drunk. Nothing else than that, you know. You can <laughs> I have no idea what he did there, but uh, didn't work. Unfortunately, it did not work. But focus on uh, upgrading your landing craft. Fizan Devil... Or Devai. Vicente Devai. I think that's an Italian name or something like that. Anyways, 35 warriors of level 8. That is interesting. Let's see what he's going to be doing here. So. He's focusing on clearing out those mines. So the idea is that he's going to go for this rocket launcher. Which would be, I suppose, the way to go to. Yeah, and he's going exactly where I thought he's going to be going for. And he did it really nicely. Look at that smoke. Only one warrior actually got hit, which is really cool. So that means uh, he has a lot of free play here. Look at them go. Smack it, smack it, smack, smack. Onto all of these buildings, just taking them out just like an actual boss. Flamethrowers, kaboom. Other flamethrower, kaboom. Sniper tower, kaboom. Can he actually take it out? I'm curious to see. No, he cannot actually take out all of the buildings, but he did like a major amount of damage, so that's cool in itself. So let's move on to the next one. Next attack actually comes from Stevo, also running with the Warriors over here. Level 11 Warriors are always pretty nice to have. They're one level higher than what I have. Actually managed to take out one sniper tower with a single artillery shell, and then just go straight again for the Warriors. I would have probably taken out this uh, flamethrower as well. That's just me. He's actually letting everything getting fired. That is something that I would have not done. Like an additional smoke is only like um, some extra energy that you need to be using. But it's for a good cause. Maybe he just wants to be preserving his energy. Which obviously is an understandable deci decision as well. And he actually made it to the back. But uh, not a lot of warriors are left here. But he still, you know, he started with 42. So let's see what he's going to be doing here. Smack, 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 smack. Smack, 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 smack. Boom, I actually took out one rocket launcher just like that. Wow, that's actually really surprising. I did not expect that. I thought that he would die earlier than that, but yeah. Ish, CR7. Going with 31 level 10 warriors. And I'm pretty curious to see how he's going to be doing it. Because he actually took out a lot of buildings from what I saw. He's going for these mines over here. Is he gonna be going for these power cells? I kind of fear the worst here. I mean, with level 10 warriors, I don't really feel that you're gonna be in the ability to take out 8 buildings. Because that's just really, really hardcore. Only if they are power cells. Yeah, and as you guys can see, he's actually taking out power cells. For what purpose though? He actually also goes for the rocket launchers. Wow, nice job there, Ish. Really awesomely done there. So he actually managed to take both rocket launches as well. Which is really awesome to see. Oh, my cannon is done. Let's actually move back to base because I, I want to keep it upgraded at all times, right? It would be a waste to not do anything if I'm here anyway. So, yeah, let's just... Four hours, let's just do that. And then start a big upgrade whenever I go to bed. Okay. We were at Stevo, and then we are right now at... Oh, we were at Ish, and right now we are at Sparrowhawk. And Sparrowhawk is also one of our higher attackers in, in, in our task force. And let's just see how well he's going to be utilizing his units. So, goes for the rocket launcher at the right side here, at the front. Does he take it out? Whoa, that requires a lot of energy to actually take it out. Which is quite unfortunate. He didn't take it out, but I, I kind of have the feeling if he has enough energy, he's going to be dropping a artillery shell on that one. So that way he can actually take it out in the end regardless. So takes out the flamethrower. Goes for the power cells, which is a really nice decision if you want to be taking out that uh, rocket launcher over there. First power cell. Does he have enough energy? Not yet. 
Second one then. Does he have enough energy? No. Third one then. Does he have enough? Yes, he does, but doesn't take it out. Moving on then to the Sniper Towers. And look at these Zookas having almost no more health left. That's absolutely insane. I think right now he's going to be in the ability to take out that... No, he doesn't. He actually does a Shock Bomb. Which is uh, interesting. I would have probably flared to the back here. Like over here. So that way I could actually take out that Rocket Larger. But that's just me. Maybe whatever I'm saying is helping you guys. And he's doing the same thing that I'm doing. Like trying to do as much damage as possible in just a couple of shots. But he doesn't take out that Sniper Tower unfortunately. Then we're going to be moving on to one of the last attacks. Sir is right now attacking. Level 13 Warriors uh, uh, Heavies and level 12 Zookas. 25 of them. Which is a nice amount. And what are you going to be doing? Taking out the Rocket Launch of course. Taking out the Sniper Tower too. So the base is kind of like... I don't know, bald, kind of empty-ish. Okay, dropping the flare to the left side, going to the back of the... or not, just taking out the cannon, just like a boss. Essentially, right now in this position, uh, I wish there, was, there would be a, uh, a pause button, but in this position, all you need to be doing is actually focusing on taking out these uh, flamethrowers and actually just have a bunch of Zookas taking out the entire power cell or power core. So, in this position, I would, would have probably moved out to the left, so I could actually, like, grab a couple of these um, power cells, maybe. So that way I can... Nah. I would just leave it to someone else, as, as a matter of fact. But, um, great job here. The path is all clear for us to take down this power core. And we're almost there. We are almost there. Two more attacks. Next one from Magwallo. Actually takes out one building. With relatively high level units. And I'm really curious to see... What building that's going to be? Something inside of me tells me it's going to be a power cell. Or not. It is actually going to be that flamethrower. There you go. So. Let's just watch this one in full speed. The power core actually gets a lot of damage. He's actually dropping that uh, shock bomb there. And his own units are getting shocked as well. And the heavies unfortunately do not survive. So that means the Zookas are just simply exposed here. And it's a matter of him getting taken out I suppose. Just like that look at it. Just two missiles from the rocket launcher is already enough to take out a single Zooka. So yeah pretty deadly stuff there. And of course the last attack from Gansito or Jansito. I have no idea. Level 8. Uh, lef I mean level 3 tanks. 8 of them only. Actually managing to take out this base. So let's go. He can just like get some distance on the power core. And then take it out. I mean anyone at this moment would have been in the ability to take out this power core. And as you guys can see. Firing away onto this power core. It is still quite kind of sturdy. But he's in a very good position. And actually takes it out just like that. And that is our operation task force uh, up to this moment. I must say. Um... We're getting better task force operations. I'm pretty sure that in the future I'm going to be showing you guys a task force operation from the beginning on forward. Um, if you guys have any suggestions when it comes down to task force operation, leave them down in the comment section below. Because that way I'm actually able to show them off to you guys. And maybe you guys come up with something that I would have never thought of. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, make sure to cast your vote for the next episode in the video description. There's a little straw poll down there. I'll be looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say and on that note i'm just going to wrap this episode off here so i want to thank you guys so much for watching and as always make sure that if you guys like this video to boom give it a thumbs up this is boom version for boom beach i'm gonna be signing off and i'll see you guys in the next one